January 24, 2014. This is Christine Moriñez. And this is Cel Galera welcoming you for this morning. People's Drive. News for the people because you ought to know. The Freedom of Information Bill has long been an issue in the country. Now that it's 2014, will the legislators finally approve of it? Kelsey Joe reports for us. Kelsey? The Freedom of Information Bill, or FOI Bill, was passed in the Senate last September 18th and is now being deliberated in the House of Representatives. Transparency and Accountability Network's Executive Chairman, Vincent Lesatin, says it is harder to work with the current legislation under President Aquino than it was under President Arroyo's administration. We thought that uh, freedom of information would be a priority of this current administration. In fact, it didn't get passed in the 15th Congress, and it is actually more difficult to work with the legislature in the 15th Congress under the leadership of President Aquino than it was in the 14th Congress under the leadership of uh, President Arroyo. The issue on the FOI bill started during the term of uh, former President Arroyo. And um, the opposition were trying so hard to have it passed. It almost passed, but it didn't, right? And um, part of the controversy would be, I guess, the requirements in the proposed law. Well, the, the bills are currently under deliberation by the Committee on Public Information. And so, as far as I, as I know, um, they haven't set a um, definite schedule, but I'm sure, I'm sure upon resumption of sessions um, in late January or early February, they will hold meetings. Well, once the uh, FY becomes law, then the advocacy moves to getting people to use the law, because without people uh, knowing about the law and then using it, the law is really useless coalition of non-government agencies like Transparency and Accountability Network, consisting of private citizens that scrutinizes the government and advocates for transparency. From Quezon City, this is Chelsea Joe reporting. Speaking of transparency and knowing the people's rights by means of the FOI Bill, the Foreign Aid Transparency Hub has been monitoring different foreign assistance sizes for the Yolani survivors. Live from the Department of Foreign Affairs is Ariel Alaco. Ariel? Super Typhoon Yolanda brought countless casualties and destroyed numerous properties. Since the devastation, aid has been continuously given to the survivors, both from local and foreign communities. The Philippine government is now preventing the PDAP scam to repeat by practicing transparency and an accountability on this international assistance. Here in the Department of Foreign Affairs, they are monitoring pledges for the recovery and rehabilitation of Yolanda survivors. They call it FAID. FAID stands for the Foreign Aid Transparency Hub. It's an ECH that allows the public to monitor you know, foreign assistance pledges. The government is thinking of expanding it further para pati disbursement to track the public. Why is it online based? Well, definitely, uh, it will be the easiest way for the public to monitor. This morning, I checked 123 billion pesos. Plus, on cash lang there is 2 billion pesos. The rest are in time. Most of the aid that we receive are sourced through the agencies. The TSWD keeps a record. They don't give it to us, so they give it to the donor. Once they receive the funds or you know, reflect the bank account of the TSWD, they will write a, uh, an acknowledgement receipt. We headed to the Department of Social Welfare and Development to confirm records from FAITH. The Secretary General is in Tacloban, so we went to their national warehouse instead. What you have here in your list, provided by DFA, they have been delivered directly to Akloban or to Cebu. Etong sa Botswana, this was purchased here in Manila. They turned over to us this five pieces of flatbed, which eventually we turned over to the SWD in Akloban. Sa Laos, yan, nakita natin, pumasok yan, directly deposited to our account. As for the Panama donation, the life scroll, this was delivered to our national warehouse in sa Pasay. If you're going to get an overall report, it could take time. Kasi unang darating yung mga air freight and then sea freight. In the case of Tacloma, dahil wala siya international air Cebu yung pinakamalapit, dumudumating. Transparency is still in question. 
public have to rely on online records from each department's websites to monitor updates on these relief operations. This is Ariel Olajo reporting. People's Rights will be right back after some important messages. Commission on Audit has reported the Department of Health resorted to panic buying of medicine, costing a million worth of expired medicine. Here is Cell Zuleta for the report. According to a Commission on Audit report of 2009, 17.5 million worth of expired medicines were stockpiled to prepare for a flu epidemic. The Department of Health had an excessive buying of medicines for the emergency preparedness for the H1N1 virus. But what you do is you stockpile uh, medicines, uh, flu, flu medicines, at the, uh, what, what do you call that uh, flu medicine? Uh, and they, Tamiflu, that's the name of the medicine. And of course, we did not have an epidemic at that time. So COA reported that as uh, oversupply. It's not an oversupply because it's what you actually stockpile in case the epidemic breaks out. So if, when there's an epidemic, you must have excess supply and then distribute it. The Commission on Audit will not give any comment about what the DOH said and will stand to its report. Tamiflu is a medicine for flu treatment and flu prevention, but it is not a substitute for flu vaccine. According to the Department of Health, there are hospitals that were inspected, but the medicines that were overstocked are for the pandemic A or H1N1. Most of these hospitals actually were inspected at the time that two deliveries came in, a quarter, a third quarter, and a fourth quarter. So when they were inspected, they looked like they had an oversupply. The DOH said that when they order medicines, they always release the old stockpile of medicines in the hospitals and drugstores before releasing the new delivered ones. So I would think if it was not given, because non to lose it, if you give it, do you harm the, the people who, who received it? You did not harm them. So I would say, what if? It was a what if in 2009 when it was, a, it was procured, diba? It was a big what if as a clinician. If given, you didn't lose anything. If you didn't give it and the what if turned out to be an epidemic, major disaster. According to the Department of Health Undersecretary Teodoro Herbosa, the stockpile of medicines happened before the Pinoy administration and the delivered medicines were not given to the hospitals before it expired. The DOH said that they will be improving the stockpile of drugs and medicines for this year and they will monitor the deliveries that will come in the department to inform the hospitals about the expiration of the medicines before they give it to the patients. This is Priscilla Zuleta of St. Scholastica's College Manila News and Public Affairs. We're back for another short message. 